peace and love, everybody. This is Anna Renee, and I am your love power goddess, your sacred word priestess, and your doula of divine transformation coming at you today. What's today's day? March 22nd, 2024. It is 2.41 p.m. on the Pacific Coast of California. Blessings to each and every one of you all. Right now, we are moving, or at least I am. Let me say, I am moving in a new direction. And I have uh, done a huge amount of purging in my life. I have given a huge amount of space in my life to holding space for others. And at this point, I must move ahead or move along my own spiritual path, okay? <laughs> it is okay. It is not leaving behind people. It's just acknowledging that I am in a different frequency at this moment in my spiritual path, on my journey, as we say. And the time for me to constantly search for others who are saying what it is that I need to hear, <laughs> what I believe I need to hear, that time has really come to a close. And furthermore, this is uh, the brand new new year, spiritually speaking, astrologically speaking. You know, we are now in the energy of Aries and moving forward and taking that leap of faith is what Aries is about, right? For me, I can no longer spend so much time. And that is a really hard thing to let go of. At least that's what I have believed. It's a very hard thing to let go of. But it might not really be true. It might be real easy to let go of. Always seeking to hear others speak about what it is that I'm thinking, where it is that I am. I can simply speak it myself. And even posted here on this wonderful YouTube, okay? It's still very useful, very useful to those who, who are going about things in their own personal way. In my own spiritual way, I can speak right here. And then I can listen to what has been downloaded into me to speak out because it is my spirit, my mind, my soul that is giving me this information. And yes, I have to acknowledge that. I have to accept that I am on a different track, you know? Maybe I'm a lone wolf or maybe I'm just on a different track. Maybe it's not so deep as being a lone wolf or all of that, where you feel that you must separate yourself from everybody, from everybody. And I, you know, I don't feel that way. I'm not trying to separate myself from everybody, but I know that there are certain things that I need to hear and want to hear and desire to hear spoken you know, as a sacred word priestess that I should probably be the one saying these things. <laughs> I know what I want to hear. And I spend a lot of time searching for somebody who's saying that, what I want to hear. And I do find people speaking. What I want to hear is the truth. <laughs> I want to hear people's truth. I want to hear people who are bold enough to say what it is that they truly are experiencing, you know, in a way that will be beneficial to others who overhear them or listen to them. People who are not distracted by other things like trying to make a living on this thing, you know, 
that's a huge distraction. Whether or not people want to believe that is a very, very huge distraction in terms of moving forward in your spiritual growth. It's a huge distraction. It's very, very difficult. And um, as I've been watching lots and lots of people, I, I watch a whole lot of people, <laughs> huge amount of people, because I've been like hardcore searching to hear people say what it is I think should be said rather than saying it myself. So I'm not speaking to any one person specifically whenever I say anything. I'm not. It's sort of like a, a, a grouping of everything that I've heard, my opinion, my thoughts on all the different voices that I have allowed to speak to me. And um, how I take that information and sort of boil it down <laughs> and come to my conclusions and my opinions about it and speak those out. It would be much better, I'm believing at this point, because it's getting harder and harder to find people speaking what I want to hear. It would just simply be better to say it myself. <laughs> It would be simply better to say it myself. For example, on the twin flame journey, as they call it, for a long time, I didn't even really want to be associated with that. <laughs> because there are so many out there who I feel are doing it because they're trying to make a living at it. And when you do that, you got to, when you're trying to make a living at it, you got to say what people want to hear not necessarily what people need to hear. So when you're saying what people want to hear, you become distorted. You aren't able to, you know, you just are not saying what people want to hear because, you know, or what they don't want to hear. You don't want to say what people don't want to hear because you're not going to make any money. You're not going to bring the crowd. You're not going to move the crowd in the right way in a way that will allow more and more people to come. But if you are on here and you're speaking your truth from your heart on your level, wherever you happen to be in your journey, and you know, you got your own thing going, you, it's, this place right here in, a, in and of itself is not the way you make a living. Then you can be more truthful based on what it is you feel that you know what you feel that you've experienced and you know what you've looked at and what you have come to conclusions about. So more and more is hard. And then there's the competition with the AI. You, you're uh, being replaced by AI on here. Real live human beings experiencing things is uh, is very difficult to find. <laughs> AI takes that away from people and then block the people. That's the way that goes, right? So you, if you get yourself in the right kind of a track on this thing, then you'll find all those channels of people who are speaking truth as they understand it, their own truths, yet they will only have a hundred subscribers, a thousand subscribers, and they get only 50 views at their highest and, you know, stuff like that. That's when you feel, well, that's how in the past I have felt a particular way about that. And I no longer do because I guess I had, a how can I say it? I had some kind of a split, understanding or not a personality but some kind of a split understanding of this thing on the one hand i wanted people to be able to say what they wanted to say right <laughs> say what really resonated with them but then on the other hand i wanted people to be able to get a certain amount of views they should be able to get the high number of views just like they did back 15 years ago <laughs> The thing is, is that this is not, this is 15 years later and things have changed drastically. And I have decided to 
get on board with that and understand it and accept it <laughs> so I can actually come back and just be in that number of the people who get a certain amount of views, high numbers of views. <laughs> That's the way you have to look at this so that you can continue to have a voice in this place. Because people do get found with the, with the low numbers, if that's the name, the word you want to use for it, the low subscriptions, they still get spotted. <laughs> you just have to know the code to find them. They're the truth tellers. Uh, according to themselves and what they've experienced, because if the truth is that, is that you want to hear real experiences. That's what uh, awakens you. That's what moves you. That's what uh, resonates in your heart and soul. Real people speaking real stories. Now the AI, they mimic real people speaking real stories. And then again, sometimes they mimic other things that's not quite real. It's not even trying to pretend like it is, you know, that kind of thing information that's what it is certain kinds of information like a particular subject like the twin flame journey which i prefer to call a divine power couple journey all the best parts that real people have spoken about on this thing maybe five years ago have been accumulated by ai and reshaped, reconfigured, reordered, and is being spoken, spouted, and it becomes predictable. Every single twin flame journey is the same thing. The information is always exactly the same, but when you really sit down and think about that, you have to say that's not possible. It can't all be that everybody's journey is exactly alike and that they should they should uh look at certain things as this ai tells them that they should you know because different journeys are different it has to be that way different things people are on twin flame journeys for different reasons according to what the divine has for them to accomplish there has to be a point when the work that is for the two people to accomplish together, that's why they come together, has to become part of the journey. <laughs> it has to be that these people go through the things they go through, the spiritual growth, the ability to work together, the ability to overcome all the obstacles that they had blocking them. At some point, you have to do that to at least the level of being a wounded healer and then get on with the work of what it is that you are here to accomplish as a couple. You know, that's why I prefer calling it a divine power couple rather than a twin flame journey because the twin flame stuff out there is just very... Uh, it's uh, stagnant, let's say that. And it, it, it has a cutoff. What always happens, what always being said, what always, all these different people who are talking, they always say the same thing. It's always hell and high water just to come together so that you can do the work. The coming together becomes the uh, the ultimate of the twin flame journey, which really makes no sense. Coming together for what? <laughs> what are you coming together to do? Why have you gone through all of this stuff that you've gone through if all it is is just for you to come together? That's just a regular couple. In that regard, in that case, divine power couple is a better term because... We understand a power couple are two people who come together to accomplish something. <laughs> they are here to do some kind of work in the world. 
that has to do with healing people. It's not that they just come together and then uh, that's it. They fall off the face of the earth. According to most that I've watched of these twin flame channels, that's exactly what it is, which tells me, I mean, that's exactly what they preach to people which tells me that they're not really here to help people move into the divine work <laughs> that they're supposed to do as a couple, as a couple, you know? They're not here to talk about that. They're here to talk about people who believe they're on some kind of a twin flame journey, but really are just people who have been scorned or who are in love with somebody who doesn't love them, you know, that kind of deal. That's all it is for those kind of people. And they, they, they blow their heads up and make them feel like, like what it is, is a twin flame journey. That's not what it is. <laughs> and these, all these different so-called gurus are catering to these people who aren't really in a twin flame journey. They're just wanting a partner. <laughs> and most of who they are speaking to are women. They are women. I find that it is hardly any different what a lot of the stuff is, that's going on out here in these uh, YouTube streets is, is no different than the church and how it spoke to black women on YouTube maybe seven, eight years ago, seven, eight, nine years ago, 10 years ago, the kind of conversations that were being had where women were, their, their minds were being, they were being gassed up. You right here are, are a woman of God. And so the man that you got to have, it's got to be a man of God. And you know, that kind of stuff. It, it speaks directly to the woman's ego and is very profitable to the people who do that kind of stuff. That, that is the reason why there were so many people doing this kind of stuff. Women were, especially black women, were, uh, they, were, they were here for that kind of stuff. They all want them a, a, a godly man. And the godly man had to check off a whole bunch of... Uh, points on a list that she had that her pastor gave her <laughs> you know extreme unrealistic kind of stuff the entirety of the thing unrealistic because it wasn't really speaking to her becoming a better person overcoming a whole bunch of different things that's what the twin flame crap on YouTube right now is about gassing up the minds a whole bunch of women making them feel like they are some divine feminine goddess <laughs> and the divine masculine is some kind of a slow-witted person who you just got to be patient and you got to wait for him you got to do and then eventually you're going to get him but you never do and the thing is is that these women never they don't want to they don't need to they can just live in their minds and their fantasies about achieving it and never doing so which is exactly what happened to a whole lot of black women in the church back in the day on this youtube thing that's how it works you just never you're always getting ready that's the whole uh mantra of td jakes Get ready, get ready, get ready. God's getting ready to do this. God's getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. You get ready, get ready. Get... Come on. <laughs> so that's why I had to say, you know what? Why don't you speak about your own forward movement? Are you in a so-called twin flame journey? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. As it's being described, no. I am on an ascension path. And what it is that I'm to do is to help people overcome the hardest kinds of situations in their minds. Okay? The hardest kind of self-hatred. 
the most difficult kinds of loathing of self, blocking of self. That's the kind of work that I'm supposed to be doing and am doing. And am doing. And it would surely be a blessing to be with a person, okay, who can do the same kind of work. It doesn't have to be no romantic thing. If it was romantic, oh, that's just all the better, okay? If I am in a right state of mind to be able to handle a romantic relationship, that's make it all the better, you know? A divine power couple. People who come together, right? First, it's the journey of being able to come together, overcoming the BS that we be having in our minds, and that we uh, play out and inter interact with each other with and interface with each other with and, you know, create hassles for each other with being able to get over that. The kind of stuff that people have inside of them that will cause them to divorce their, their person, <laughs> to break up with their person. Being able to, on the other hand, overcome that stuff come together with the spirit of the most high in you and point to those different issues that you have and overcome them. Because the two of you connect on a deeper level. You have similarities. The part of the twin flame stuff that they teach where they say that the people are connected on a soul level, I agree with that. I believe that. Okay, I believe that part. But the part where they say, "Oh, you, you, you're, you're getting closer. You're getting closer. You're, you're, you're getting closer. Oh, your, your, your uh, divine masculine is running, and you're chasing, and he's running, and you're chasing. All that shit. After a while, you got to get beyond that. You gotta, you gotta overcome the stuff if you really are on a true journey of." A divine, becoming a divine power couple. There have been plenty of power couples around here, right? Doing work, you know, doing something. It's not just about the fact that they're, they look good together, kind of deal. Oh, they're doing work. They're healing people. They're doing the work of the divine. There are wounded healers who have healed themselves and each other and have come together so that they can go out into the world and do even more work healing others. When there's a good, if it's a good church, then the first lady and the pastor are a divine power couple when the, the when the woman when the first lady has a voice and she is doing something okay not just sitting on the uh, first row of pews and just sitting there fashion showing okay that's not that's not enough okay it's nice you want to have a a beautiful first lady <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's good. Why not? But what is she doing? Okay, is she doing anything? Is the the pastor, the husband, cheating? Is he on the DL? Is he doing other kind of crazy stuff? Or is he connected deeply with his female counterpart? Okay, and they together are doing powerful work not just she's on the sideline you know uh booking appointments for him and stuff that's not that's not what i'm talking about <laughs> although that's uh, that's good and it has its place but i'm talking about a divine female and a divine male a divine masculine and a divine feminine that has come together as one Okay, like a yin and a yang symbol, 
they have combined their souls together. They have the same ideology. They have gone through similar kinds of traumas and have overcome them and know they have a knowledge they know what it is like and so they go into the communities and they do the work of helping others to heal over that stuff together because you want to have the feminine energy as well as the masculine energy combined makes a much more powerful front, so to say. <laughs> much more power there. Okay. That would be the reason for the divine feminine, divine masculine, twin flame, or whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it a divine power couple. That would be the purpose of them coming together, having overcome all the things, okay? Having, they have the knowledge of that kind of thing, that kind of trauma, that kind of pain. They know what it is. So they can relate to the people that they are helping. They can relate to them. The people can pick up on the energy and relate back to them, you know, and trust and relax and release and actually heal because they know that who it is, this power couple, they've gone through it. There's nothing like when you have gone through it and you're trying to help somebody else, they see that you've gone through it. They know that you know. It's like people who have lost a child. That's a very difficult thing. I, I don't know what that's like. I've never lost a child, okay? So I can't relate on that level. But a person who has can relate to somebody who has, okay? Much better than me because I never have. I don't know what it feels like. I'm, I've never experienced that. So that's what the divine power couple are coming together for. That's why they're going through this, this twin flame journey. That they call it. <laughs> they're doing it for a reason. So they're not going to be here 30 years later still not unionized <laughs> still haven't come into union it's 30 fucking years later that don't make no damn sense that's a waste of time on this earth the most high knows that life on this earth is only but 100 years okay average you have to be real lucky for it to be average <laughs> but the point is is that we have to trust in the most high's wisdom. So we, we got to say, well, if it's taking 15 and 30 years, then we're not moving forward. We're not progressing. If if supposedly a twin flame journey, then it probably is not a twin flame journey. It's not that. It's something else. I don't know what it is. What else it is. But the twin flame journey has got to happen in your lifetime. You have to come into union at some point so that you can then do the work that you have been assigned by the most high. If you believe in uh, reincarnation the way so many people do, a lot of times people who believe in reincarnation feel that it's the only purpose of it is just giving you another chance because you fucked up the life before and you fucked up the life before that and the life before that. And, the, and it becomes ridiculous. It's the same thing. You're just going and going and going and never accomplishing shit <laughs> that you're called to. That's why I don't believe in uh, reincarnation on that level in that way. Okay, I don't believe that. Things got to happen in your lifetime. The journey has got to happen. It's got to happen in a certain amount of time. And then the union has got to happen. And then you have to be able move forward into the actual work of healing. There are lots of uh, twin flame couples or divine power couples, people who do healing work, and they're a couple. You see them in uh, well, 
the new age is the best way I could put this. You see them in the new age, you know, the good ones, the ones who actually are doing the work of healing others. They come together and they do their work together as a couple. That's a different dynamic than just one person and one woman over here or one man over there kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. But I'm just saying that those separate entities like that are not a divine power couple. They're not a twin flame. Twin flame is, see, the name itself is, it doesn't speak to what I'm talking about anyway, because the word, the term twin flame is just, what is it, what is it saying? It just sounds like a very hot, romantic uh, relationship. And even with that, the people, there, they never can get together, according to your gurus on the two. They never get together. They're always a few steps behind actually getting together. There are some gurus on here who say uh, them coming together is not even important. <laughs> them coming together is, 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 is that 3D shit. <laughs> we living on a five on a 5D at this point, you ought not even be tripping about coming together. And this is a twin flame. That's supposed to be about a, a strong love relationship. But they're not supposed to be able to get together. <laughs> what it really is, is that these people, in all their teaching, are not helping people. Okay? They don't have the right codes. They don't have the right information. They're not coming to... Because... Why? <laughs> Why is that? Why does that happen? Because people want to be coaches, twin flame coaches, twin flame experts. The twin flame journey is supposed to be a, a real powerful burning of all kinds of negativity in your heart and mind when you come across each lesson that you got to overcome it's going to be real difficult. You're going to reject. You're going to fight against. You're going to not want to deal with it. You're not going to want to believe it. You're not going to want to, you know, it's a huge amount of resistance. Now, if, uh, if somebody who's trying to be a coach meets with that kind of resistance, they're probably not going to be able to make a living doing the stuff. And so nobody's going to waste their time who's trying to make a living at it uh, and teach people the real, the true. So they have to figure out a way. For some, it's not about <laughs> you ever coming together. It's about you ascending. Well, if that's the case, why even go behind? Why come under the uh, auspices of the twin flame journey in the first place if it's not about a twin flame connection if it's about ascending if that's what it's about then just call it ascending can't do that twin flame is more popular ai terminology so you see how people get stuck that's what i've been coming across again and again and again because i have been on one okay i am purging a whole bunch of stuff I am coming to a new understanding. And the reason is because I decided and declared that I'm going to be a healer and healing, helping people to overcome huge baggage, huge kinds of bags. <laughs> baggage is what I do, okay? I am that bag lady, okay? I've already hurt my back, okay? My back already has been hurting and has been healed and is now strong, okay? My back is real strong. Why am I going through all of that if it's not because I'm supposed to help others? <laughs> so after saying all of this just now, <laughs> What I'm saying as well is that this so-called journey, divine power couple journey, is a spiritual journey 
to help people on a spiritual level, help people overcome their blockages, no matter how difficult the blockage is. We don't throw people away. We don't throw out the baby with the bath of water. I don't give up on nobody. <laughs> you know what? I, that's just me. I just don't give up. Okay? I'm relentless in that regard. Relentless. Either I'm doing something, I'm saying something, or, or I am holding space for something. Because I see you. Okay? I know what I'm looking at when I look at you. Either you have gone through some kind of trauma or you have some kind of uh, issue with your own self. You've been told some lies about who you are. You believe wrong things. You compare yourself negatively to the, the popular way. You've fallen into the trap of believing what popular opinion is in terms of what it is you're supposed to look like or be when you're a woman, what it is you're supposed to have accomplished or be as a man. You've fallen into all those traps. Now you need to come out of the traps. Here I am. Here I go. Here I go. <laughs> okay. That's what we need. We need people who are divine power couples to come together. If it's supposed to be a couple. If it's supposed to be a couple. If they're doing the kind of work that requires the merging of male and female energy. And we also know that the male has masculine and feminine energy. And the female has masculine and feminine energy. The male has more masculine and less female energy, feminine energy, and the female has more feminine and less masculine. It comes together to create a balance in each of them. And so with that, that's the part you gotta heal. You gotta heal your, your energy and balance it properly. And then you come together and create the same kind of balance between the man and the woman. Or the male energy and the female energy. If it's two men, okay, let's say this. Or if it's two women. If it's romantic or if it's not romantic. If it's platonic. Whatever. The energy's got to be balanced so that they can go ahead and do the spiritual work. Helping others. Okay. That's the kind of thing that I need to see. I'm going to have to speak it. <laughs> because... I haven't heard anybody saying what I have just said. I haven't been able to connect to those people. I'm sure they exist. It's just that AI is not allowing them to come up in my feeds at this point. And I've been searching. <laughs> I've been searching long and hard. And I've gotten to the place where I'm no longer going to do that. I'm not going to search. I'm just going to speak what is being gifted to me. And that's probably why I can't find them because the most highest is telling me you speak and let somebody find you. You speak it and then let yourself be found. What I sure hope and pray for everybody is that you don't, if you are trying to make a living on this, don't, don't fall into the trap. Don't, don't delude yourself and fall into the trap and, you know, accepted, you know, say, well, you know, I got to live, I got to do this, you know, you, you actually don't, because when you fall into that trap, believe me, when I tell you, you get caught up real bad, and you don't get no points no more, it used to be maybe seven years ago, you get some points, <laughs> you might get more follows and all that kind of stuff, but these days, you don't even get, they don't even give you that, they don't even give you the, uh, decency and respect of if you sell yourself out like that, at least giving you something <laughs> for yourself. You're not getting real people coming in commenting. And I, I, I've been reading comments and there's a pattern to the comments that you can tell is AI is not real. It's the way people speak, supposed people. <laughs> 
depending on what it is. I, I'm very aware of the kind of comments that come through because I listen to soul music on YouTube all the time. At first, it used to be a thing where there were no comments whatsoever <laughs> on certain ones, especially like Vivo, no comments, <laughs> or the ones that says topic, no comments. Now, I notice they are allowing comments. Comments are coming through, but the thing about it is that they're AI comments. They're not real comments from real people because the comments always are the same. Like, for example, let me give you an example. Okay, you can be listening to uh, a song by uh, the OJs. That song, Brandy by the OJs. I haven't listened to that song in so long. This, this is just coming to my mind right now. And that song was kind of a sad song a little bit. With a song like that that's, that gets you in your emotions, you, you go to the comment section and you, you'll see a comment like this. A comment that would be like this. My mother passed away just a few years ago. I love her so much. She used to play this song when I was growing up. I listen to this song all the time because she played it. She loved it so much. I love you, Mom. Thank you, Mom, for teaching me about soul music. You know, that's a fake comment. <laughs> the, the comments always start like that. It starts with some kind of a revelation of some kind of emotional thing. My, my father did this. My uncle used to do this. That's not even a way people comment. People comment like this. This is the way I've commented. Oh, this is a badass song right here. I used to love this song. I remember when I was a kid listening to this. I'm not fixing to say, well, you know what? My uncle did this or that. Yeah, that's how you can tell. And when the comments always have that same kind of vibe to them, each comment be the same kind of vibe. It's not a real comment. <laughs> They got those kinds of comments when you're dealing with soul music. I'm gonna tell you because I used to I I paid attention all these years from white people who would come on and make a comment on a soul music video. <laughs> because back then, you don't even see that no more either. They eliminated all the white people who love soul music <laughs> making comments. They they wanted you to acknowledge the fact that, well, you know what? I, I know about soul music. This is how I learned. I learned because my uncle did this, that, and the other. They stole that from the white people who used to comment on soul music. That's how they got that kind of a vibe type of comment. <laughs> That's what they use as the basis of the building of how they create comments on this thing. It's wild. It's crazy. It, 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 it's, it's fascinating, to be honest. Okay? If it's AI, it's gotta, what it's got to do is take some of everything, right? And then build something new out of it. That's what they told you that AI does, right? Well, they took the comments from white people talking about soul music, not black people. <laughs> well, but that's the way it is. That's the truth of the matter. Especially on a group like the average white band. Oh my God. <laughs> Those were some badass white boys, okay? The average white man. Oh my God. Okay. And yeah, they've been, uh, people have uh, bitten their music since the beginning, okay? The average white man. <laughs> so, white people would. Back in the day, white people come on and just talk about how how funky those white boys were, you know, how they sounded. They were good. And they were. Okay, they were. That music still sounds good to this day. <laughs> to this freaking day. <laughs> After all, the average white band was on Soul Train. <laughs> you gotta be good if you're gonna be on Soul Train. Don Cornelius was... Don Cornelius was not just going to have it in your body. 
on its own time. <laughs> they were good. And a whole lot of types of comments were made by the white people who were proud of these soul boys, okay? Blue-eyed soul. Those are the comments have, that have been taken by AI and used to build more AI comments. That's, that's the truth. I know it's the truth. Ain't nobody ever said it, but I believe it. Because I'm that one who has been watching soul music on YouTube for years. And I've watched how the commentary has changed. I used to live for the comments. <laughs> I used to love to find comments and then even reply to people's comments. You can't even do that no more because you know it's not a real comment. <laughs> so my people, be careful with this whole thing. They don't give anything. They don't give you no perks anymore. They just make you bleed out. You, you slit your wrist for this thing and still not get nothing. Which then means then you might as well just, you know, do something else. <laughs> Make a living some other kind of way. Come down off your high horse. Okay. We're in a time where we can't be on a high horse no more. Do you see what's going on? Have you listened to Pam Gregory, the astrologer? <laughs> Have she told you that things are going wild and crazy? Has she given you the blueprint of what to do? Stay on your uh, high energy, you know? Has she told you what the astrology is, what's going on? Pluto is overrunning the world at this point. <laughs> Newtonian energy. Has she told you that we are moving into the age of Aquarius and it's going to be chaotic? She's been saying that for years. We're here in this time. It's very chaotic. You don't have time to be on no high horse. They want you to be on a high horse. And then you got to lie and pretend that you're living big when you aren't. Anybody who knows what time it is knows that you're not living big. It's falsehood. And you can't allow yourself to keep going down that path, trying to be pretending that you are what you're not. It's just not the time. You have to be able to flow with the time. The cycles have switched. They're turning. You have to be able to flow. That's how you survive, okay? That's how you survive. They can't even make the kind of money they used to on this thing. I mean, the companies. There's too many companies competing with each other to make money off of us. We don't even have that kind of money to spend on all the products no more. They, they already understand that much. So you have to be able to flow. Tighten your belt. <laughs> Tighten your belt. Don't be ashamed. Don't be, don't be that one who, you know, don't know how to uh, ebb and flow. That's what life is. Ebb and flow. Up and down, in and out. You know? Around and around. <laughs> you have to be able to accept it all if you're a spiritual person. And that's what the divine power couple is here to teach us. Okay. Or you could just be a, div a divine person. <laughs> a divine person. Or a divine power couple, depending on what it is, you know, that they're teaching, what they're helping people to overcome. You can't be no fool up in these YouTube streets, is what I'm trying to say. That's all I'm saying, my people. So, yes, I feel that I am on this journey to connect with a particular person. I'm not talking about all that detail. I, I don't even want to, I didn't even really want to come on here and say divine twin flame or whatever, you know? Because the way they describe twin flame, that's not even how it is. For me. Overcoming some real heavy difficulties is not impossible. <laughs> it's not. It's not even as hard as they make. If you open yourself up and are willing to 
humble yourself, then you get there way faster. If you are hardcore <laughs> and unable to be humble, can't be told anything, then it's going to take you that much longer. Feel that you are alone in the world. You're a lone wolf. It's going to be real, real hard for you. You can say whatever you want to say about that. In this day and age, you need we need each other, and we have to be able to interconnect with each other because that's the times that we are living in. Pam Gregory never stops going on and on <laughs> about earthquakes, you know, tsunamis, just all the things, okay? That's the earth going through, okay? There are those people who believe that the earth is also going through this situation, <laughs> this change. I, I, I believe it. Weather patterns are way more intense than they used to be, okay? So you have to be able to shift and move. You have to. You can't be rigid, okay? You can't you can't live on rigidity because it, it it'll mess you up. It'll destroy your health, it'll destroy your mindset. You have to be open. Eat less. <laughs> if that's what it means, you know, downsize your apartments, your houses. You don't need a five-bedroom house if it's only you. <laughs> you don't. Or if you, you know, if you got it like that, then, you know, take your five-bedroom house and start renting rooms out on that joint and have uh, multiple streams of writ come in or something. You got to be smart like that because that's where we are at this point. In 2024, this is the place we are. We have to be smart like that because there are entities out there who are here to try to destroy. And that's as it should be. That's as it should be. <laughs> when you overcome that stuff, then you have reached your levels. You have reached a higher level of strength. That's how it works. Okay? And that's how it works on a true twin flame journey, which I'm calling a divine power couple journey. You're coming together, not just so that you can kick it, so that you can do the work of helping others because you have helped yourself and you have brought together all the energies in perfect harmony. And you understand that that's what you have done. And you know how to use that high level of energy that you created by coming together to help others. People are going to look at you. Like I said in my last video, people are looking at me. Do I have what it takes for people to look at me and expect anything that's going to be beneficial to them? I better start believing it if I don't. Okay. After all that I've been going through, <laughs> I better believe it, okay? And if the Most High has put me on a so-called divine power couple journey, then I really better do it, especially at this stage in my life, 63 years old. Please, I've been married twice already. <laughs> I've been married twice already. <laughs> at this stage, surely I should be able to sit down and kick my feet up and just do nothing but watch TV or something. But I've never been the one. I still don't have a TV. I haven't had a TV in this house in 15 years. <laughs> you know? That's all right, though. I have a computer screen, and I do be watching YouTubes. <laughs> but only certain kind of YouTubes. One movie that I want to re-watch <laughs> is Mo Better Blues. I've been watching little clips of Mo Better Blues. Spike Lee's joint. That was a badass movie. That was a good movie. Plus Denzel, when he was in his 20s, check it out. And Wesley Snipe, whoo, baby. Do you like melanin? Then you will want to get you some Wesley Snipes in mobile blues. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just saying that. I'm a melanin uh, gazer. I ain't never heard nobody say that before. 
maybe I heard it maybe 10 years ago, someone said it, when we used to be so deep, you know, when we used to watch the likes of people like Jewel Pugram, <laughs> who would break stuff like that down. Yes, I'm melanin gaze. Like some people's sun gaze, I'm melanin gaze. It's just about the same, to be honest. <laughs> the darker, the berry, the sweeter, the juice. My third eye opened when I'm watching somebody who's got a lot of beautiful melanin. Okay? They don't want you to appreciate melanin. Anyway, my people, peace and love and blessings to each and every one. I'm still working this out. How am I going to come on this? <laughs> How am I going to do it? Like right now, you can't see me. I think that's the way I prefer it. And I might get back into my, uh, what do you call that thing? Create new videos. Uh, Photoshopping. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Adobe Photoshop. Adobe uh, Premiere Elements. What I used to be working back in the day, creating scenes on the thing so that you see pictures and not me <laughs> all right my people peace and love i might start doing it i might you know i feel moved to it you know now that i have i got another about 20 more books big fat books hardcover books that i'm getting ready to throw in the trash i'm not even going to take the time to donate them to the library because I know they're going to just sit on the shelf somewhere. And they're just books. You know, books are books are books. They're old. You know, I got one. Let me let me list the books that I'm getting ready to throw away. The New Basic Black, How to Be by Harriet Cole, Tasting Brazil by Jessica Harris, The Wisdom of the Enneagram, okay, 1,000 Symbols, all the different psychological symbols that we know of. A Taste of Africa by a sister named Hafner. On the Side by Jessica Harris. High on a Hog by Jessica Harris. The California Indians. Ebo English Dictionary. And a whole bunch of others. I'm not, I don't know I'm trying to this But anyway, books that, you know, I felt like they were Bibles. <laughs> And I've been holding on to these books for decades. It's crazy. <laughs> and they were Bibles. <laughs> but I'm getting ready to get rid of them. I'm throwing them in a the garbage can. That's how hardcore it is. That's how hardcore it is. I don't need them anymore. I don't want to carry them around. I don't want the weight. Just having the books on the shelf weighs me down. And now that I've started throwing away books, I feel like throwing away even more. I want to get rid of even more books. I might start getting rid of the uh, Meta Netter books, too. I might, I might do that. I might. I'm feeling like it. I have a book called African Holistic Health by uh, Le 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 How you pronounce name? Layla Africa. I have not ever picked that book up to read it. And that book was a straight high level bible i already know that i have queen of fools book i chopped that book into pieces i've never read queen of fools book like that i never did the only part that i read was sac sacred beauty and sacred health i mean those are the only sections that i really went into on a deep level and i already got rid of all my yana van zandt books <laughs> i got rid of them I don't need them anymore. That was me 20 years ago. Now, I, I chopped Queen of Fools' book up because I thought I was going to put it in a binder and then I, maybe I would look at it more often. <laughs> but, but I chopped it up and I still ain't looking at it. I looked at it already. I looked at that book when I was 41 years old. <laughs> 63 now. That's 23 years ago. Get rid of it. Don't don't be afraid. Don't don't worry. You got what you need from that. It's in your heart. It's in your spirit. That's what we're dealing with, my people. All right. So let me keep this video under one hour, fifty nine and nine seconds. Counting. Enter in a your love power goddess, sacred word priestess and doula of divine transformation. It's time for me to start putting forth the sacred word. 
priestess energy. <laughs> that's the one. The doula of divine transformation. That's the one I've been doing. I've been doula. <laughs> Doula-ing. <laughs> my own self. Holding space for me. It's time. All right, my people. Peace and love. <laughs>